from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Helena. I'll give you the latest update on the process of setting up new charter schools run by school districts across Montana, a process that led to legal questions and eventually a lawsuit. Contentious cross-examination in Trump's hush money trial. I'm Jared Hill with how the former president's lawyers tried to go after his former fixer's credibility. And a staple Bozeman restaurant has a new look. Up next, our Cassidy Powers gives us an inside look. And breaking down barriers. That's exactly what one woman has done in her 25 years of bull riding. Alrighty, it is 6.01 on this Wednesday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. Sun already has risen over the mountains and yep. it's a beautiful morning. Maybe a little wet though on some of the area roads. Uh, a few areas were dealing with some rain showers mm -hmm. as late as an hour ago. Yeah. Those showers are pretty well gone. Mm -hmm. Our temperature is still pretty comfortable. Uh, kind of surprising as you step outside. Yeah. You still need a jacket, but just barely. Uh, most of us sitting into the 40s, a few areas into the 30s this morning. Uh, today is going to be a little warmer. We do have those showers that we're passing through. There's still maybe a few drips and drops in southern parts of Gallatin and uh, Park County at this hour, but our overall trend remains pretty mild for today. Among the warmest days that we're going to see over the next seven days, daytime highs really building into the afternoon today and tomorrow. We will see an increase in cloud cover for today. It is gorgeous out. It's nice to have a little rain. It mm. won't be long. We're going to be mowing again <laughs> today. I'm sure my neighbors are ready for me to do a little of that. Get her cranked up, man. Give me a call. <laughs> uh, but you know, my uh, my bounty of dandelions is doing quite well. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's what I like to hear. A little bouquet is that, growing. Uh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> should have picked some for Mother's Day. Temperatures Shoot. back into the mid 60s <laughs> and low Next 70s year. for today. <laughs> We're going to talk more about your hour by hour for forecast and long-term forecast in just a little bit. There's always next year, Matt. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, 602 now. Leaders say more than a dozen school district operated charter schools across Montana are on track to complete their setup process after questions about the procedure that eventually led to a lawsuit. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian has the latest on where these schools stand. In January, the Montana Board of Public Education gave the go-ahead on 19 proposals for school districts to open new charter schools under a 2023 state law. After some back and forth about the requirements for launching those schools, the Montana Office of Public Instruction says 15 are now ready to go. After the board approved the first round of charter proposals, OPI came out with guidance for what districts needed to do to start the charters. As part of that, the office argued they needed to go through some additional steps that other new schools would have to go through before opening, including getting approval from county commissioners. A group of public education organizations sued State Superintendent Elsie Arnson, saying those requirements weren't intended to apply to charter schools and that the extra steps could create uncertainty and delay funding. Funding. Last month, a district court judge in Helena blocked the requirement, among several others, but said OPI could require additional attendance information before declaring the charters open and finalizing funding. Last week, the parties filed a motion saying OPI's policies were complying with the judge's order and allowing charters to launch in time for the 2024 school year, so the rest of the case could be dismissed. On Monday, the Office of Public Instruction told MTN that nine schools have completed their setup. They're in Billings, Corvallis, Frenchtown, Great Falls, and Missoula. They said six more schools in Hamilton, Helena, and Kalispell are set to receive their final budget data from OPI in the next few days. OPI said they're still working with one school, two more haven't submitted the required information yet, and one school has delayed opening until 2025. There are also ongoing lawsuits challenging two other school choice-related laws from last year's legislative session. One that established a community choice charter school system, and one that set up education savings accounts for students with special needs. In Helena, Jonathan Ambarian, MTN News. Now on the national scene, former President Donald Trump's Manhattan criminal trial took a fiery turn as his lawyers began cross-examining star prosecution witness Michael Cohen. Defense attorneys are attempting to paint Trump's former fixer as motivated by vengeance. 
Cohen is expected back on the stand tomorrow as the jury tries to determine whether the former president is guilty of knowingly falsifying business records to allegedly disguise hush money payments as legal fees. CBS News' Jared Hill has more from New York. Michael Cohen, Trump's fixer turned fierce adversary, is facing a confrontational cross-examination from the former president's defense. We had a very good day. Tuesday, Trump's attorney Todd Blanche worked to discredit Cohen, pointing out his public attacks on his former boss and attempts to sell disparaging merch online, like this t-shirt depicting Trump behind bars. At one point, Blanche asked Cohen if he wanted to see Trump convicted. Cohen responded, sure. They're basically doing everything they can to make the jury see Cohen as someone who's really almost like a jilted lover, someone who at one point would do anything for Donald Trump, and now he's done a 180, and his whole life's motive is to get revenge. A gag order has barred Trump from publicly discussing some details of the trial. Tuesday, an appeals court refused to remove it, but this week, a throng of big-name Republican supporters have shown up to court and lobbed attacks of their own, including House Speaker Mike Johnson. This is the, the, the fifth week that President Trump has been in court for this sham of a trial. In his testimony so far, Cohen claims Trump was aware of a plan to pay him back for funneling $130,000 to adult film star Stormy Daniels in order to hide an alleged past sexual encounter ahead of the 2016 election, saying Trump knew financial records would list the reimbursements as legal fees. Trump denies the encounter and has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. And the prosecution has said that Michael Cohen is their last witness. And after that, the defense will begin presenting its case. Now a little bit closer to home for three long months, Mackenzie River fans waited for their beloved Bozeman location to reopen. And that day has finally arrived. Mackenzie River closed on February 8th for its first remodel in more than 30 years. The restaurant sold all its original wooden furniture and painted bull skulls to loyal customers as a way to give back to the community. And Monday, May 13th, it reopened to the public. Our Cassidy Powers visited to see the new look, which is described by the restaurant as the classic Mackenzie River feel with a modern twist. The biggest change is the window or the windows, the windows opening onto Main Street, beautiful furniture that we have. Um, the chairs are a reclaimed wine barrel wood wind, and then on a metal frame. And so they are gorgeous and kind of just what Bozeman needs. And another new addition is the pickup window in the back of the restaurant. Allison tells us so far the community response to the remodel is overwhelming and great. And breaking down barriers. That's exactly what one woman has done in her 25 years of bull riding. She began her rodeo career in the 1970s, eventually becoming a multi-time world champion and a huge advocate for women in the sport. And now her story is going to be told for all to hear in an hour-long documentary. MTN's Charlie Kleps has the details. In the 1970s, it was a rare sight to see a woman competing in bull riding. That's exactly what Johnny Jonkowski did, winning two world championships and even competing against the men at times. She's still to this day considered a Montana legend, but her impact extends far beyond just the rodeo, including here at her nonprofit called Angel Horses Incorporated. I said. In the eventful life of Johnny Jonkowski, there's always been one constant. I mean, I was a girl that just loved horses. That love is why a poster advertising the Red Lodge Rodeo caught her eye nearly 50 years ago. And I thought, well, how bad can this be? A 25-year career later, and she's still known as one of Montana's best, recently being named to the Hall of Fame. All you really ever want it to be is that you got noticed, I guess, for going out there and doing what you love doing. But it was hard for her to not be noticed, many times competing against men and constantly advocating for women just like her. Most of the girls just wanted to ride, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it didn't grow our sport. From Billings, Montana, Janet Dunkowski. By the end of our hour and a half conversation, I said to myself, this woman absolutely warrants her own film. Her storied career and life is now being picked up by Montana PBS, who is looking for the last bit of funding to have the project completed by October. Through the course of making the film, I've learned the depth of her 
resilience, and determination. That determination was tested last June when flooding swept over Billings, swallowing up her nonprofit called Angel Horses. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. There was no recovery. Honestly, there was no recovery. The nonprofit provides free therapy for seniors, and when word spread that it was going under, the community she's helped for nearly 20 years rallied to help her. It all helped, and what it helped is, is made me stronger not to quit. The donations poured in, and Jonkowski was able to make a full recovery, currently geared up to offer the services again this summer. You go through life, I think, hoping that you made a difference, and that was a validation that I made a difference. You know, it's not for me. It's for them. <laughs> Everything about this is for them. In Billings, Charlie Clef. I mean, an incredible woman with an incredible story to tell. Yeah be really an interesting documentary to watch. Now, before we head into a break, I wanted to share this with you. Now, this is going to take us down to California, and this is actually a two-parter story. So okay. this is the first part. Now, what you're seeing right now, this is the San Diego Humane Society, as people are working to save a mountain Ooh. lion. Now, this mountain lion was hit by a car, left stranded on the side of the road. People just, you know, figured that, well, it was probably going to die there. Well, some rescuers were able to get it to the right hands. It had road rash wounds, birds, broken teeth. But the people here at the Humane Society did not give up on this mountain lion. They worked tirelessly, and after two months, they were actually able to rehabilitate it, Matt. Oh, wow. Look at how incredible that is. I'm just, That's amazing, the dedication that those veterinarians mm, had. Exactly. I mean, just the, the tenacity to keep going yep. regardless of the odds. And there's a part two to the story, and we'll get into that in about 15 minutes, so oh, you're not going to want to miss that. Clocks. All right. We're going to take a short break here in Montana this morning, but when we come back, we're going to continue our candidate profiles for Montana's Western Congressional District as a Kalispell minister has announced she would like to unseat incumbent Ryan Zinke in the June primary. MTN's Catherine Rowley sat down with candidate Mary Todd. Hello, 